Hi everyone, next packet is redox reactions, okay? So redox is actually an acronym, okay? Maybe you heard of KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple stupid, right? That's an acronym. Redox is an acronym for reduction oxidation, right? Okay, now with this work, it's very, very, very important that we understand the difference between the two processes because they're easily confused, okay? So, <clears throat> redox are simultaneous reduction, hence the red part, and oxidation, hence the ox part, reactions. So, redox, reduction, oxidation. Now, every time an iron pair is formed, if you think back to like forming sodium chloride, Na bumps into Cl, two neutral atoms, and the electron jumps over, right? So the thing that gains the electron becomes minus, the thing that loses becomes plus, and then we've got a plus and minus ion and they stick together. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on, by, on behind the curtain there, okay? So ionization is actually a redox process, all right? So oxidation is the loss of electrons, right? So in that process, sodium would undergo oxidation. Oxidation is loss of electrons, right? So Anything it loses is said to be oxidized, right? Okay, reduction is gain. Okay, reduction is gain of electrons. So chlorine becomes chloride, gained an electron, chlorine was reduced, okay? Now, <clears throat> there's many, many ways to kind of remember that. If you've um, taken a biology course, you may have heard of Leo Sesgur, right? Let's just write that down here, right? Leo Sesgur, okay. Now, Loss of electrons oxidation, gain of electrons reduction. If you've learned that, stick with it, okay? However, if you haven't learned a little kind of uh, mnemonic yet, okay, this is my preferred one. Mine's a bit more macho, right? So <laughs> think of the Gulf of Mexico. Think of an oil rig, right? <laughs> Staffed by electrons, they all work there, right? Sillier the idea, the more easy it is to remember, okay? Then I think of oil rig of electrons, right? So that's an oil rig of electrons. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, oil rig of electrons. So oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons, right? Okay, so oil rig of electrons. As long as we keep that concept straight, we're good, right? Now, there's <laughs> the classic uh, magnesium plus oxygen to make magnesium oxide, okay? So I talked about sodium earlier. This is just the same, it's an ionic compound, right? So magnesium bumps into oxygen, we've seen this reaction before. These are neutral, they're just atoms and a molecule, right? Okay, electron jumps across to make Mg2 plus O2 minus, okay? Mg2 plus O2 minus. So I've made an ionic compound, so electron transfer has occurred. Oh, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So all processes like this are redox. It's kind of a, a way they do it, okay? Now, question then, which one's oxidized, which one's reduced? Okay, well, who lost, who gained? Always remember, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, okay? Now, the best way to think about this is to kind of think about what is the charge on these things, right? We call that the so-called oxidation state. Okay, so for simple ions, the charge is the oxidation state, so that makes life nice and easy. For an atom, no charge. For a molecule made of two atoms, no charge. Then magnesium goes plus two, oxygen becomes oxide minus two, okay? So which one, think about it like that, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. I always, I always like to think about the gain. Who gained an electron? Who became more minus? Well, oxygen went from a zero charge to a minus two, oxide. So, it gained electrons. Reduction is gain, all right? So, oxygen is the thing that was reduced, right? Okay. Look at the other one. So, Reduction is gain, we just talked about oxygen. Reduction is gain, went from a zero to a minus two charge, so it gained electrons which are minus, reduction is gain. Look at magnesium, magnesium goes from a zero to a plus two. Oxidation is loss, it must have lost minuses to become more plus, right? So, magnesium. Now, here's the thing, metals pretty much always are oxidized. The word oxidation actually comes from adding oxygen, right? So if you think about it, whenever you burn something, it forms this oxide. 
So oxygen is an electron stealer, so I make magnesium oxide, right? Magnesium loses its electron, right? So it's oxidized. Because it's added oxygen, it's oxidized. So if you ever see a reaction featuring oxygen, the thing oxygen is binding with has become oxidized. So any burning reaction, any combustion has this redox kind of under the hood, right? If it's burning a metal, all right? Now, glass half empty, glass half full. I'm gonna say this one time and one time only, okay? Because it's always, it's called complementary learning, right? So if you remember oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons, rather than anything else, you won't get confused. But just to show you, they may ask you this question, right? So the glass half empty, glass half full situation, the oxidizing agent, the thing that causes oxidation, right? The thing that causes magnesium to be oxidized is oxygen. The thing that's causing oxygen to be reduced is magnesium. So it's actually switched. Whenever we have the word agent on the back, it's the thing doing the business, if that makes sense. It's the other one, okay? But my advice is complementary learning. Just learn, hey, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. Just look at the charges. Hey, magnesium went plus, it lost electrons, all right? Oxidation is loss, magnesium. Oxygen went minus, reduction is gain. It's the reduced species, reduction is gain. Okay, so keep that straight. It's plain sailing, okay? People that get that confused often get the questions wrong, okay? All right, now, for easy um, oxidation states, this is why you write, you know, column one with the Roman numeral one, column two, Roman numeral two. The oxidation state an atom makes as an iron is often the same as its charge, right? So group one makes a plus one iron, it's said to have a plus one oxidation state. Group two makes a plus two iron, said to have a plus two oxidation state. So for simple atomic ions, it's the same thing. Oxidation numbers, oxidation states, it's kind of talking the same language, okay? However, when we get on to more complex things, like molecules, for example, so it turns out every atom in nature has an oxidation state, but not necessarily an ionic charge, okay? So it's like an accounting mechanism. So when we get onto molecules, which don't contain ions, right? Because they're molecules. They do have oxidation states, which helps us with kind of the math. So we'll talk about oxidation states a little later, but very simply for simple compounds that are ionic, it's the same as the charge in the ion, okay? So oxidation number or oxidation state, just think of it like that for the easy ones. It's the charge on the atom as if it were an ion, okay? So sodium in a compound will have a plus one oxidation state because in a compound it will make a plus one ion, okay? So when we kind of write that down, we could then look at changes, right? So if it goes from a zero to a plus one or from a zero to a minus one, like we've seen before with sodium chloride, we can assign, based on the change, oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. Okay, so before we do that, before we start looking at changes, we've got to remind ourselves how to assign oxidation states or charges. So what would Na be in NaCl? Well, obviously Na makes a plus one, Cl makes a minus one, right? So that's an easy one, right? But instead of writing plus one, I'm just gonna write one in Roman numerals. If you like, you can put a plus in front. But we say, hey, sodium is a plus one oxidation state. In this case, it's okay to write it underneath, okay? Because it's not referring to chemistry, really. It's, it's kind of an accounting thing, okay? Feel free to work out the others. What's the charge of magnesium in magnesium chloride? That will be its oxidation state. Okay. Obviously, that's a plus two, group two. Cl and AlCl3, careful, right? Chloride is a minus one, and there's three of them to cancel the plus three, but it's a minus one oxidation state. And if you did that rust extra credit, some of you did, well, a lot of you did, that was good. You can work out that that's actually iron three in there. Two threes, a six, three twos, a six. So that's iron three, so that's a plus three oxidation state for iron. Okay, all right. So again, for simple metals and atomic minus ions, okay, it's the same as their regular charge, is the oxidation state. So we know <laughs> we can use our little kind of periodic table thing. Group one makes plus one, they'll make plus one oxidation state. Group two makes plus two, plus two oxidation state. This is why we label those columns with Roman numerals. It's really labeling the oxidation state. Okay, group seven makes minus one. Group six makes minus two, okay? Oxidation states are always expressed in Roman numerals just to keep things straight. Okay, now, here's an interesting question. All right, so in an ionic compound, Na plus Cl minus, all right, 
one has a plus oxidation state, one has a minus, okay? Fair enough, because an electron was transferred. All right, but in any element, the oxidation state is by definition zero. Think about it now. A good way to think about this, and we'll talk about electronegativity in just a second. Actually, let's talk about it right now, okay? Have you ever wondered why things from the top right-hand side of the periodic table make minus ions preferentially, so F minus, O2 minus, Cl minus, because they're essentially electron stealers, right? They grab electrons with great vigor. Yeah, so they're strong, right? They're strong. And electronegativity is a measure of electron stealing. Oh, electronegativity is a measure of electron stealing strength, right? If you look at it, hey, why do things in the top right-hand corner make minus ions? It's because they're all super strong, right? I love this graph because it, the height is the, the strength, the electronegativity, right? So fluorine is the strongest electron stealer in nature, has a strength, and the scale runs from zero to four. It has a strength of four, right? Okay. And if we look at the trend, well, look, it's kind of a bottom left to top right thing. Top right-hand side of the periodic table, fluorine, not noble gases because they don't make bonds. Electronegativity only applies to stealing electrons, right? And you only steal when you're bonded, okay? So fluorine is the strongest. Then we have that kind of dividing line, and that's the same dividing line we see between metals and non-metals. So metals are weak, non-metals are strong. The lowest strength is cesium, 0.7. There's nothing with a zero, it turns out. So the actual range is zero to four. Yeah, cesium is the weakest. Cesium is like the Pee Wee Herman of the periodic table, right? Whereas fluorine is like the, uh, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the periodic table, 1984 full steroid load, right? Okay. Now, if Arnold Schwarzenegger and Pee Wee Herman were to have a tug of war, Arnold would win. He would steal the electron, right? Okay, that's why F becomes minus and Na, for example, would become plus, weak versus strong. Okay. And we talked about electronegativity briefly when we talked about the order of atoms in compounds, right? So it's always Na first and Cl second for sodium chloride because it's weak first, strong second. And in every other compound we've seen, even molecules, carbon first, which is weaker than oxygen, right? So it's actually, I say the bottom left, the top right trend, it's actually the trend in electronegativity. Always weak first, always strong second. And you can just look up the numbers and decide, right? Okay. Now, back to an element. In an element, by definition, it's atoms with the same identity, right? So it's like a tug of war between two equally strong people. Who wins a tug of war between two equally strong people? No one. If there's a little flag, right, there's the rope, the little flag would stay in the middle and would never move. That's why in diatomic elements like chlorine, fluorine, hydrogen, whatever, two atoms the same stuck together, the electrons are right in the middle, right? And that's the definition of a pure covalent bond, a perfectly shared pair of electrons, right? So for any element then, no one wins, no one loses, so you stay at zero, right? If you win, you become minus. If you lose, you become plus, right? But if you have a tie, you're a zero. So it doesn't matter how strong each of these atoms are, they're pulling with the same force, if you like, it's always zero. Okay, always zero. Okay, so oxidation states of elements are zero. It doesn't matter if it's a metal or if it's a molecule, whatever it is, if it's the same atom stuck together, same strength exactly, zero. Okay, so we've got two things now. We've got ions, their regular charges, their oxidation state. Elements, always zero. Fair enough. So, <clears throat> let me flip over here. Oxygen, fluorine, lead, aluminum, all elements, right? All oxidation state, zero. If we flip back, that's why magnesium was assigned a zero oxidation state because it's just a chunk of metal, right? It's just a chunk of metal. Magnesium stuck to magnesium in that magnesium ribbon. Okay. All right. Now, this is where it gets fun, okay? So we've done the easy ones, but what about atoms embedded in molecules, for example, where they're stuck to things that aren't the same as them. Well, they have an oxidation state, but they don't necessarily have a full charge like you would in NaCl, right? So we can actually work out, it's kind of an accounting thing, we can work out the oxidation state of things in molecules, right? Now, here's a very important thing to remember. It's called the sum of the oxidation states rules. Turns out that if you have something that's overall net charge zero, like any molecule, right? For example, HNO3, right? That's a molecule, no net charge the sum of the oxidation states is zero for a molecule, right? Now, here's what I like to do. I think about it in terms of the, um, 
electronegativities, right? So if I look at HNO3, there's going to be a winner, the one that steals electrons. There's going to be a definite loser, the thing that loses electrons. So the most top right will be the winner. It will be its natural oxidation state. The thing that's a loser will be its natural oxidation state. And then the thing in the middle, the meat in the sandwich, will adjust its oxidation state, okay? So if we look here, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, well, oxygen's the winner, hydrogen's the loser, nitrogen will adjust, right? So that's how we do it. So when I have HNO3, I like to do the math on the side, right? Don't nope, move it up for you. Okay. Excuse me there. Okay. Now, there's three oxygens, right? So there's three of them. And it's the winner, so it steals electrons. So its natural oxidation state is minus two. So it contributes, if you like, minus six to the total. The total is zero because it's a molecule. This is the sum of the oxidation states rule, right? Hydrogen, that's the loser. So the winner, we had the loser. Well, the hydrogen is only one of them times, what's this natural oxidation state? Group one plus one equals plus one. Now, nitrogen. Nitrogen's the one that has to adjust, right? There's one nitrogen in the formula times its magic oxidation state, 1x, right? So, minus 6 combined with plus 1 combined with x all adds up to 0. What's x? Yeah, x equals 5. Plus 5, right? And we put plus 5 because it's, there's no such thing. No such thing as a plus 5 nitrogen ion. There ain't, right? But in terms of our math, it has a plus 5 oxidation state. Now here's the interesting thing. Oftentimes, uh, oxidation state is actually telling you how many electrons are involved in bonding, right? Later on, we'll figure out that, hey, everything in column 5 has 5 outside electrons. Column 4, 4 on the outside. Column 3, 3 on the outside. We get onto that later, but for now, it's quite common for the group number, nitrogen's in group five, to use all of its outside electrons for bonding. So oftentimes the group number is the same as the oxidation state. Often, not always, but often. Okay. All right. So we say nitrogen plus five oxidation state. All right. So that's how it works for molecules. But what about polyatomic ions, molecular ions in other words, right? Well, the sum of the oxidation states is the overall charge, right? So here I've got nitrates. I've got N and O, okay? Obviously nitrogen is the loser in this case because oxygen is further to the top right. It must be the winner. So I've got 3 times minus 2 and this all adds up to ah, minus 1 because it's a minus 1 ion, right? Okay. Nitrogen is one of them times its, oh, <laughs> one of them, times its magic oxidation state, oh, that's minus six. So, something combined with minus six is minus one. Ah, plus five again, What's that nitrogen, plus five. Okay, so when you have a molecular ion, the sum of the oxidation states equals the overall charge of the ion. When it's a molecule, if you like the overall charge of a molecule, it was zero, so it adds up to zero. Okay, now, that's how it works 99% of the time. However, sometimes we get a couple of weird ones, right? So we said oxygen is always oxidation state minus two because, you know, column six makes minus two ions. Except when? When does it not win? Well, it never wins if it's bonded either to itself, which would be a tie, or if it's bonded to the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the periodic table, which is fluorine, right? So be careful for ones that have oxygen bound to itself or oxygen bound to fluorine. I'd love to do the kind of a map method, right? So I call it, I do it like this, right? So that's what dihydrogen dioxide looks like, right? So imagine a tug of war. Who wins a tug of war here? Well, that goes plus one, that goes minus one. Who wins the tug of war here? That goes plus one, that goes minus one. That's what we expect for hydrogen, right? It's bound to something that's not itself, it's going to lose. But who wins the tug of war between oxygen and oxygen? Normally oxygen would, if it was water, would steal another electron to make my, uh, minus two, but no, it doesn't. This is a tie here, right? So at the end of the day, oxygen is a minus one oxidation state and hydrogen is its regular, oh, plus one. And we can do the math to prove it too, okay? I mean, if you like the geography method there, it's kind of common sense thinking about who wins the tug of war. But hey, 
Oxygen's not its normal self in this example. It's a molecule, adds up to zero. Oxygen is the variable in this case because it's bound to itself. So let's do hydrogen first. Two times plus one is plus two, right? Oxygen, two of them times the magic number is 2x. Now careful because this is the first time we've seen multiple x's, right? So 2x plus 2 is 0. x equals, you got it, minus 1. So oxygen is minus 1. Okay, just like we kind of figured out with common sense. So if we can do this one, OF2. That's what it looks like. So it's like water, but with fluorine instead of hydrogen, right? Fluorine's going to win. It's going to be minus one. Oxygen cannot be its normal oxidation state. It has to be variable, right? So common sense says that's a minus one, that's a minus one. That lost one, that lost one, that must be a plus two. Ain't no such thing as a plus two oxygen, right? But in this compound, it has an oxidation state of plus two. Let's just show you, right? So oxygen, fluorine. Fluorine's the winner. Two times minus one equals minus two. Well, that's up to zero. It's a molecule. Oxygen, 1 times x equals x. Something combined with minus 2 is 0, obviously plus 2. All right, there you go. Hopefully that's making sense, kind of neat, right? Okay, <laughs> having some technical difficulties with the action camera, okay. So bottom line is, when chlorine is bound to oxygen or any of the lower halogens, okay? If we look at the lower halogens, iodine, bromine, chlorine, they're all weaker than oxygen, right, in terms of electronegativity. So oxygen will win, become minus the halides, the lower halides, chlorine, bromine, and iodine will have to go plus, right? So when you have something like this, a molecule or a molecular ion, oxygen's the winner, chlorine's the loser, all right? So give it a shot, try that, see what happens. Okay, let's see what you can do. Chlorine, oxygen, adds up to zero, it's a molecule. Two of these times minus two equals minus four. One of these times x, its magic oxidation state must be a plus four. So that's a weird one, right? Chlorine in chlorine dioxide is a plus four oxidation state. It's true, it's an accounting thing. There is no such thing as a plus four chlorine ion, no such thing but it has an oxidation state in terms of the accounting we're doing here. And why do we do the accounting? So we can assign redox processes later. Okay, we'll see that in a minute. Okay, try this one. So chlorine is the loser, oxygen is the winner. All adds up to minus one. Three times minus two, minus six. X must be five. Okay, five. Chlorine, we say plus five oxidation state. All right, so, <clears throat> seem to be doing all right. Um, what I want you guys to do is try to assign oxidation states in these compounds, okay? It might get to the point where you can kind of see it just by looking at it, right? And sometimes you'll have to do the, the math like we did here, okay? In this one, for example, I know that oxygen is going to beat sulfur, Right, okay, so that's three minus twos is on the oxygen side is gonna be minus six, so sulfur must be a plus six. And that kind of makes me feel good because sulfur, as you know, is in group six, okay? It's in the same column as oxygen, but it's weaker because it's lower down. So this one loses, this one gains, right? Okay. However, if I have something like this, when maybe, you know, with this complication of the minus charges, I want to do the math, right? So I can do that. So minus two is what it all adds up to. I've got sulfur and oxygen. I've got one sulfur times its magic oxidation state. And I got four times minus two is minus eight. So something combined with minus eight is minus two. Well, it's six again. Again, sulfur is in column six. We kind of sort of expect it. All right. Here, hopefully you can see, xenon actually is a large low down in the periodic table, noble gas. Turns out when there's electrons for lower elements, we'll talk about this when we talk about trends in the periodic table in more detail. For lower elements like um, xenon, for example, those outer electrons, even though they're technically unreactive, they can be forced to react with a very strong reagent because they're loosely held by the atom. We'll get to it later, okay? So lower noble gases like xenon in particular will react, right? So we get, xenon hexafluoride, right? Fluorine's always minus one. It's the winner every single time, right? So six minus ones, xenon must be a plus six. 
It must be, because it's with six minuses, okay? This guy here, chromium. Chromium has one of the highest oxidation states in nature, all right? If you are uh, <laughs> ever seen the um, Aaron Brockovich movie, right, that talk about hexavalent chromium, that's a chromium of a high oxidation state, right? Okay. Let's figure out what the chromium oxidation state is here. Okay, so chromium, oxygen. Oxygen is going to be the winner. So we're going to add up to minus one. Chromium is one times x. Oxygen is four times minus two, minus eight. So chromium must be the difference minus eight minus one plus seven, right? Seven is the highest known oxidation state. Okay, hexavalent chromium in Aaron Brockovich is chromium with a plus six oxidation state. So CrO3 minus perhaps. Okay, all right. Last couple. Careful here, careful. Think of electronegativity. You may think, oh, who's the winner, who's the loser? It's kind of hard to decide. If I look at my map, sodium's lower down than hydrogen. So sodium loses, hydrogen gains. Yeah, remember hydrogen kind of sits right on the fence between metal and non-metal. Okay, I can get hydrogen H2 gas, which is molecular, and I can get HCl dissolved as ionic, right? Okay, but it turns out that H and Na, H is the winner because it's stronger, it's higher up, right? So sodium is the loser. So sodium does its regular thing. So sodium one times plus one equals plus one, adds up to zero. Hydrogen one times X equals X, X equals minus one. That's called the hydride ion. You may have seen nickel hydride batteries, for example, right? So when metals combine with hydrogen, hydrogen actually goes minus for an ion. But when hydrogen combines with non-metals, it goes plus for an ion. Interesting. All right. Finally, this should be a no-brainer. <laughs> should be, right? Magnesium's group two makes a plus two ion. So it's three times plus two plus six, right? Oh. And nitride is an ionic compound. You know nitride makes a minus three, right? So that's two times minus three equals plus six. Well, minus six. Adds up to zero. If you set nitrogen as the variable, you could just work it out. But just from memory, you should know that nitride on our list makes a minus three atomic ion. All right. Okay. Time's pushing on. Before I tell you how batteries work, I'll just stop briefly and come back. Okay. So see you in a second. Okay. Now, here's an interesting question. Did you ever think about how does a battery work? Well, all batteries run on a redox process, right? So if you think about it, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So if I make one pole of the battery, the minus pole, right, lose electrons, instead of just going through a solution to hook up with things, I can make them go through a wire to hook up with things. So oxidation is loss, electrons, if you like, are released, they travel through a wire, reduction is gain, and they complete the reaction at the other end of the battery, if that makes sense. So running electrons through a wire is a result of a redox process behind the curtain driving it, okay? So in a battery, it's usually a couple of metals, okay? So if you think about um, Duracell battery, it's called the copper-colored top battery, right? Because one of the reactants is copper and copper plus two ions. The other reactant is zinc, actually, and zinc two plus ions. So you can combine any pair of metals with their ions and you'll make a battery, okay? And if you take chemistry 102, we actually get into making batteries. It's kind of fun. We can work out voltages and all things like that, okay? But for now, all we need to know is, well, who's stronger, who's weaker? And that comes back to the old periodic table, okay? So here's an example. Zinc plus iron two will react to make zinc two plus and iron. Zinc went from a zero to a plus two, did it lose or gain electrons without looking? <laughs> it went to plus, right? So it lost. So zinc was oxidized, right? Oxidation, all right. Iron went from a plus two to zero, so it got more minus, yeah? So it's reduction is gain, okay? If I want to do agents, I just switch the names, okay? So there's a battery in process, right? What also works, it also works the same way, not for batteries, right? But also, well, actually, it is an example, right? If I had kind of counter ions on here, if I had like uh, iron, oh, if I had iron nitrate, for example, iron two nitrate, it would look like a single replacement, and that's what it would be. Okay, so if we go back to a familiar single replacement, one you've seen before. Okay, <laughs> so you know we did lithium and sodium with water, 
to make lithium or sodium hydroxide in H2 in our quiz and in the notes, right? But I can use magnesium or anything from group two as well, calcium, whatever, right? So here's a single replacement for magnesium replacing hydrogen, right? Remember, I can write that as 2HOH. So the hydrogen gets kicked out. Hydrogen is less reactive than magnesium, yeah? The lower down the metal is towards the bottom left-hand corner, the more reactive it is, the more likely it is to form a plus ion or lose electrons, right? Okay, so magnesium's more reactive than hydrogen, single replacement, that's a redox plus process. Magnesium went plus two, hydrogen went plus one to zero. Hydroxide, if it doesn't change, right? That's why I like to write HOH, think of it as not changing. So in, inside the OH, things didn't change, all right? Now, <clears throat> what I want you to do, and use this as a guide, right? Use this as a guide. Assign each thing an oxidation number, and then think, oh, it went from here to here, right? Is that loss or gain? And then just assign oxidation or reduced, right? Okay, give you a minute for that, come on back. All right, so, first one, nice and easy. I like to do it like uh, you, you would do it in chemistry 102. So zinc, all right, if we do zinc, I got zinc zero, which is here, that's the sine oxidation states, that's a plus two, that's a zero, that's a plus, oh, plus two, right? Zinc zero goes to zinc two plus, right? So that's oxidation or loss, think about it. it, it Oxidation or loss, sorry, oxidation or reduction. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Did it lose or gain electrons? Well, it lost, right? So it's oxidized. All right, copper, copper two plus went to copper, just metal, right? Okay, did it lose or gain? Well, it became more minus, it gained electrons, reduction is gain, okay, all right. If you like, and you like, uh, you want a little bit of a heads up for later on, you can write these as what's called traditional half equations. Zinc lost two electrons. If I write like a balanced process, it did that, right? Copper gained two electrons, and it did that, right? If I kind of add those together, I get cancelling of electrons, and that means when the electrons cancel, it means it's done correctly. We'll do more details in redox if you take chemistry one or two, okay? So here, now remember, we're just assigning oxidation states for individual atoms, right? That's a zero, that's H plus Cl minus, plus one, minus one, minus one, two of them, plus two, that's a zero because it's a molecule, right? So calcium went from zero to plus two. Did it gain or lose electrons going from zero to plus two? Must have lost, right? So typically, as is the case, metals are reduced, right? Oh, sorry, let's get that, I nearly did it, right? Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Did it lose or gain? It went from a zero to a plus two, right? Oxidation is loss, oxidation. If you ever get stuck, oxidation typically will go with the metal. Okay. Hydrogen, and we don't worry about chlorine because it doesn't change, we're only thinking about change in these equations. Hydrogen went from a minus one to a zero right? Did it get more or less charge, right? It became more positive. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, right? So, reduction. Okay. Oh, careful, careful. Reduction. Plus one to zero, it gained a minus, it went minus, it gained a minus, it went from plus one to zero. Reduction is gain. Okay. I guess you can see, you gotta be careful, right? So always remember oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. All right. Last couple, iron, zero. Now the nitrate doesn't change here, right? This would be just like this equation. If I had to put nitrates on the back here, it doesn't matter, right? It's, we're only looking at things that change. So because I've got nitrates the same both sides, it doesn't matter. Nitrates are minus one, so that makes nickel a plus two, right? Nickel's a zero, it's a solid, and two of them, plus two again. 
So it's kind of symmetric, plus two, minus two kind of situation, right? Okay, so, sorry. Plus two, zero, plus two, zero, all right? But let's look at what happens. So iron, zero, two, plus two, all right? Hmm, did it lose or gain? Well, it went plus, right? So it's got less minuses, so oxidation, right? Nickel, went from plus two to zero, it became more negative, reduction is gain. All right, fair enough. Now, maybe you tried this last one and you sat there scratching your head. Guess what? Not all reactions are redox. In this one, sulfur is a plus six, oxygen's a minus two, minus two, plus one. In here, if we did the kind of the whole workout, That'll be minus two, and there's four of them, so that's minus eight, that's plus one, so that makes that six. <laughs> okay, nothing changed. Turns out that reaction is not a redox process. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, pretty much the end of the packet. Um, stop there, and we'll see you guys on the next one. High five! <laughs> Great! Hi everyone, here's something fun. So occasionally I like to give you a surprise extra credit. So if you're watching this, okay, congratulations. You have hopefully reached the end of the last uh, video. Okay, and here's my happy smiling face, right? If you're here and you're watching this before the deadline for watching this video, send me an email immediately with the line in the, in the, in the title, give me five right give me five points of extra credit I'm giving you five points of extra credit for getting to this video on time <laughs> Woo okay see you next time high five <laughs> Great.